do you think are some of the like top three things people should know when it comes to data science interviews or how to be prepared yeah, so rather? I think the first thing is, is how to get the, the interview to begin with. So I have a really good friend. His name is Jeff Lee. He's a, a data, a senior data scientist at, uh, at Spotify. Right. And he, yeah. during the pandemic landed seven different offers from all like bang, big tech companies, whatever it is. And he did something pretty incredible where he approached applying for interviews very much like a data scientist tracked all of his information, tracked his success rates, looked at all these things. And he actually did this in his his uh, first application process when he was, uh, you know, applying to entry level data science jobs as well. And what yeah. he found was was pretty incredible. So the first thing he found is that the medium in which he applied to these jobs, uh, his success rate changed dramatically when he was a C from when he was a uh, senior data or like a more senior data scientist from when he was an entry level data scientist. So as a senior data scientist, yeah. he had a lot of success applying through traditional job boards, right? He, he put in an application, people would recognize who he was, he would go through the process, and he would be able to land an interview and potentially a job. Uh, with the entry level applications he had virtually no success with that uh there's a company called sharpest minds they do data science mentorship they collected a lot of data on this and you're looking mm -hmm. at interview or like job hit rate or like landing a uh a data science job at around two percent of the yeah. companies you to apply to so if you apply to 100 companies you're looking at two job offers right for like the average candidate. wait hold on you got to run that back what was the what was that metric what, did you say 100 and then you said two so yeah, so two percent uh, success rate on job applications, right? It's mm. very very low. I mean, that's for the average candidate. So some people are seeing yeah. five to ten percent. Uh, some people are seeing less than two. Uh, but you know, they're they're applying to a lot of jobs. What they also yeah. found is that the interview success rate, so actually in the interview, went up dramatically. We're talking like three four x when you're applying uh, and like cold emailing. That is one of the most effective ways, whether it's on LinkedIn, you send a message, whether it's finding someone who is a relevant stakeholder in the company, the hiring manager is usually the person to talk to uh, uh -huh. when, when you're reaching out more directly. And yeah. there's a correct way and an incorrect way to do this. You know, if you're like, hey, give me a job, <laughs> probably not going to have a lot of success. Yeah. When you're reaching out with something tangible that shows proof of work, let's say you, you built a, a really slick web app based on one of your projects you send it to them and say, Hey, you know, this is something I built. Uh, like I, I love your company. I would love to explore, uh, how I could build something like this for your team or something along those lines. Like that is an incredible conversation starter, right? You're not mm -hmm. just asking something from that other person. What you're doing is conveying value that you've created something they might think is cool. And then yep. you're also in addition, planting the seed that you could do that for their company as well. And there's plenty of really good blog posts on how to do this precisely. I have a whole podcast related to this uh, on on my uh, podcast channel as well. But, you know, Sparknotes, it's it's the channel at which you reach out is really important based on the stage that you're at. So entry level, mm -hmm. you want to send a lot more direct communication. Uh, senior level, you have a lot more options. And and like that's just kind of the, the nature of the game and how it's played. Uh, the second thing I really always recommend is to build your portfolio, is to show your work. There's actually a really good book. It's called Show Your Work. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not about data science or anything, but it just talks about how the power of putting your content out there. And it's not saying, hey, this is how great I am. Look at this really cool project. It's yeah. saying that you're just like all social media should be in my mind. You're sharing your progress. You're sharing your story. You're sharing the things that went well. You're sharing the things that didn't go well. And people love the story. They don't want to hear people mm -hmm. bragging from the rooftops about their accomplishments. They want to hear what's real. They, they, they get invested right. in the story. You think of a lot of the great YouTubers, the vloggers, whoever it is, you don't watch them because you're getting advice necessarily. You watch them because you're interested in what they're doing every day. You're interested in their thought process. You're interested in her hearing about this journey. I hope again, hopefully I do this on my YouTube channel. I will never claim to be like an expert expert. <laughs> my goal is to say, do. hey, yeah, these are the experiences that I've had, and this yeah. is hopefully what I've learned and what, what someone else can learn as well. 
So putting your content out there, you eventually start to grow a brand, right? Mm -hmm. People know yep. to go to your, your mediums to be able to see this type of work. And eventually, once you reach a critical mass, the, the paradigm flips. So rather than me applying to companies, in a sense, the companies start reaching out to you. You know, the yep. way I look at it, I, I've accumulated a really strong brand on LinkedIn. And I have a lot of companies that reach out to me and they're effectively applying to me for for these job positions, right? They're saying, we have this great out opening. Uh, we think you'd be a really good fit. Why don't you come in and, and we'll talk about it. And I'm not planning on leaving my job anytime soon, but there is this point where if you put enough stuff out there, you're creating enough value for other people that mm -hmm. the, this incredible uh, kind of like gravitational uh, like force starts to form around the, the things that you create. I like gravity right. because it's like, hey, the larger mass you have, so the larger mass of content that is useful, uh, just like planets, the bigger the planet, the bigger the pull it has, right? Uh, yeah. And to me, it, it, it's difficult to get to, to that size, but it doesn't mean that, but that's not a journey that ever stops. Like if you're continually adding little things to this uh, GitHub portfolio, this Kaggle profile, this, this LinkedIn presence, uh, this blog, whatever it is, you eventually reach that size and it helps you not just today, not just landing this job, but for the rest of your career in its entirety, assuming you're not putting stupid stuff out there uh, that, that'll get yeah. you canceled or anything along those lines. <laughs> so, um, you know, to me, that's something that that uh, it, it's like a, 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 a marathon, not a sprint type of thing. But Definitely. once you start doing it and once you start seeing the power of it, I mean, me just starting to do that with YouTube, like I started YouTube because I saw that there were some challenges that I faced breaking into mm -hmm. the field and I wanted to share my experience because I didn't see any resources about, oh, I came from business. How do I break into data science? Like, how do I learn the technical skills? What are, where do those come from? And I just said, oh, I'll just make the video I wish I had, right? I'm sure someone was yeah. interested in that, right? Just by putting those things out there, um, you, you start to see the power and momentum that you create and you can ride that momentum into a new career. For mm -hmm. me, the content stuff, uh, it's not my full-time job, but it, it is in a sense, a little bit of a business now, right? I like do earn some residual income and those types of things. Like in and theory, leverage. yeah, exactly. In, in theory, it can become anything I want it to be. Uh, the, yeah. the last part about building a portfolio is that you have a reason to talk to people or people don't mm -hmm. just write you off when you reach out to them. If they go in and, and let's say I want to reach out to someone on LinkedIn and I've commented on three or four of their posts, uh, they, they've seen a lot of the work that I'm posting and sharing on LinkedIn. The odds of that person responding to me is unbelievably higher, like e even more so now that I have a podcast, I say, oh, I want to talk to you about the podcast. Like that is a proof of concept, right? That is like, oh, yep. this person has interviewed these other guests that are hopefully like, uh, influential in the field like there's no uh th there's like significantly less fear of talking to this person that they'd waste my time since right. he's talked to all these other people that are relevant and figuring out how you can build those blocks and stack them on top of each other uh, to me is is like one of the keys to career success and and building that over time um, so again long story yeah. short build don't think of it as like a hey i have to land this job Think of it as the more I can build this portfolio, this brand for myself, the more success and longevity that I can build in the long term uh, for my entire career, not just starting today. If you enjoyed this clip, here is another clip that you guys will enjoy from the very same segment or watch the full episode over here. With that said, don't forget to subscribe. And with that, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.